Yo, what's going on guys? Will with Gutter Fighting Secrets. I'm coming to you today from beautiful, uh, currently not so sunny, Seoul, South Korea. It, it really is beautiful out here though. Bro, what are you doing in Seoul, South Korea? Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, I'm actually on my way to uh, Southeast Asia to do some uh, pretty intense training out there. And then I'm also going to coach and corner my friend in his uh, first um, professional Muay Thai fight. So big honor for me. I get to do a couple of weeks of really serious, really great training with a lot of really professional martial artists. And then I get to um, coach and corner my friend in a freaking professional Muay Thai fight in Bangkok Stadium. So I'm pretty stoked. But this video isn't about me. This video was about you and your martial arts journey. Actually, it's seven things that are universal truths that I've sat here like for an hour and written down that I've learned over 18 years of um, practicing martial arts pretty consistently, like very, very frequent consistently. Um, these things that I've learned, I've learned throughout my travels in the world. You know, guys know I travel to go train a whole lot and I've just, I've been immersed in this subject for a long time. So whether you're a beginner, novice, or way more seasoned than I am, uh, these things are going to ring true and be universal truths that I think we can all agree on as martial artists. So. Stand by, let's jump into it. I'm gonna hit you with an intro real quick and then we'll jump into this once and for all. <laughs> all right, guys, see you in a second. Right? We're freaking back, guys, and we're talking about the seven things uh, that are pretty much universal truths that will help you in your martial arts journey. Now, the first thing that I've got here on this list is like arguably one of the more important things to be aware of. People freaking lie about their backgrounds. Yeah, that's right. Like a lot of um, instructors out there and stuff will like lie about their backgrounds and exaggerate shit. Like, they will definitely exaggerate it. They will sometimes even straight up lie. Like, a lot of the times what I've, like, I've met people who were like 88 mics, I think it's an 88 mic, don't quote me on that, truck drivers in the military. And then they like are bragging and claiming that they were a ranger or like special forces, which is ridiculous because like, all the time, like there's always people out there that were like, I was in when he was in, I never fucking saw, like, so, Whatever, people do it though. Um, people exaggerate their credentials. It, you, ha In some ways, you kind of have to, to make it in this industry. And that's, I'm not lying about that. Like, in fact, I've never really lied about my background and that's one of the reasons this channel is so small still is because I don't have a special forces background. I, I don't have, I don't have like qualifications um, like some of these guys do out there that make their channels blow up. And like, I'm okay with that. I'd rather tell you guys the truth and say, I'm a dude who loves to train than like come out and say, I'm an ex Navy SEAL. And then like Navy SEALs are like, we don't know who this guy is. And then it's embarrassing, right? And then you lose all of your face um, and you're like following, it's, it's like short-term gains, right? It's like, it's like going and freaking, um, going all in on GameStop it goes to the moon, but then you don't fucking cash out, right? Well, of course you're gonna lose everything you had. Same type of deal, but people don't think about that, so people will lie. Um, it's all about marketing in this game. If you market your product well, whatever that product is, you are going to obviously sell more of it, right? So in order to market yourself, and yes, like nowadays it's all about marketing yourself. You are the product, right? When I come to you on YouTube, like I am, I am a product that you are consuming. Like this, these videos are a product that you are consuming. It's different. It's way different than it used to be. Like one of my original mentors, his name is Scott Bolin. He is a pretty well-known dude in the martial arts world. He taught, teaches, and talks a lot about um, mental warfare and psychological self-defense and you know he also teaches a lot of close quarters combat back in the day kind of before youtube he sold a lot of informational products and he would even teach guys like me how to sell our informational products but you know what that's gone out 
out the window these days. It really has. People don't really make money by selling like DVDs or like instructional programs or things like that because it's mostly out there for free now. So what are guys like me doing to try to make money in the martial arts world now? Um, we're getting sponsorships, we're coming on YouTube, we're monetizing our channels, we're doing things like that. So it com becomes very much more important, you know, marketing ourselves as YouTube personalities, right? Um, so people obviously are very tempted to like lie and exaggerate about their backgrounds, but what I've always noticed is that eventually people who lie and heavily exaggerate their backgrounds, huh, they get caught. So it's just, it's not smart. Don't do it if you're thinking about doing it. Um, be honest and grow yourself organically would be my advice to you. All right, so the next thing on my list is it's all about repetition. Now, there's no secrets in the martial arts. There's not. I'm sorry to say, I'm sorry to spoil the surprise. There's no like hidden secret techniques out there that anyone's going to show you that will like unlock the the hidden potential within you know like the hidden potential within you lies through training and repetition if you practice 100,000 chops into the throat you're going to be very good at chopping somebody into the throat and you are not going to have to think about it ever you are simply going to react it's also important the way that you program that into yourself by the stimulus, okay, this is where it gets a little scientific here, by the stimulus that you are reacting to. So if you always train 10,000 chops into the punching bag, you're going to be really good at chopping a punching bag. But when somebody's swinging wildly at you and moving around, it's not going to be the same. So you have to practice not only the repetition of the individual technique, but also the repetition of that said technique under various levels of stress and stimuli. So yes, you have to do a lot of sparring. You have to do a lot, a lot, a lot of fighting different types of people, sparring different types of people. But the repetitions that you put in are going to count immensely. That's what it's all about. And another thing that I kind of have subtexted under here is that the only way to learn how to fight is to fight. It's plain and simple. You know, I've always noticed that like when I do a lot of um, drilling and stuff, like it's cool, it makes you feel good, it puts the stuff into your muscle memory, but then anyone out there who actually is a fighter knows as soon as you step into the ring and start sparring with another proficient individual, it doesn't matter how many one, two, threes you've thrown. If you're not able to take advantage of his timing or lack thereof, if you're not able to disrupt his rhythm, if you're not able to put together all of these er other various things that you learn only through fighting, um, then you're inexperienced. And so experience and repetition is the name of the game. There is no dim mock. I'm sorry to tell you that. There isn't. If there was, fucking don't you think the special forces would be using it? Like, don't, don't you think if it was that easy that, like, there would be military doctrine on it. People who literally get paid to kill people would be using this. It doesn't exist. I'm sorry to tell you. The whole myth that I grew up with in the 90s and learning, you know, ninja, ninjutsu stuff, like that was the rage back then. Dude, like it's, it's marketing. It's bullshit. It's marketing. All right. And it doesn't exist. The whole kit and caboodle here about becoming a very proficient fighter is to fight a lot and practice your repetitions over and over and over under various stimuli. That's it. Now, number three, let's take a look at the list here, is slow and steady wins the race. Now, this is what a lot of you guys out there, especially the younger guys, don't want to hear. Um, don't try to become a martial arts master in the matter of like a year. It's not going to happen. I don't care how much you spar. I don't care how much you train. I don't care how dedicated you are. I applaud you for that, and I salute you for that, but it takes time. Another thing is the older that we get, the less our bodies like us, <laughs> especially guys like who are very dedicated and 
I will dare say, professional martial artists, even if you're not making a lot of money at it, if you're still as dedicated as some of us are, you're a professional. Um, your body, the older you get, is just going to freaking feel older, right? Like, I've been doing this for a long time, and I've, I've trained hard for a long time. Uh, you definitely don't have any excuse the older you get, right? But your body will, like, get sore as shit and stay sore as shit. So what I'm saying by that is it's okay to train three days a week. At, you know, sometimes you train harder for longer, right? Sometimes you, you got a fight coming up. You need to do like a fight camp. You need to go hard for a couple of weeks, a uh, couple of months even. Sure, like, yeah, absolutely. Like, that's just what a fighter does. Can't, you can't train five, six days a week, two, three hours a day, every day, and expect to like not get injured. It's just not possible for the human body, okay? Even for the younger guys out there, you got to give yourself some rest and recovery time. Otherwise, the body's just going to break down and it's not good. If you dedicate three, four hours a week and make sure that those hours that you're putting in are proficient, you're going hard enough, you're focused when you are training, Everything is on point when you train. Well, listen, three solid training hours a week of very dedicated, very precise, very hard training is way better than six or seven of those that like half of, or more of them is just like you pushing through it. So slow and steady wins the race. And eventually, all you young guys out there, I got to tell you, you're going to have to slow down eventually. All right. So yeah, go as hard as you can for as long as you can. But stick with it, make it your lifestyle. Okay. That's, that's a big difference I've seen between like people overseas over here in Korea and in Thailand and stuff. Like people train because it's healthy. You know, like the Thais always say, Muay Thai good for you. It's true. That's why they train, dude. They're not like all trying to like make a living doing it. Like they're not all trying to be straight killers. Like they, they get, they get there, but not even on purpose is because slow and steady wins the race. Train because it's good for you. Train because you love it. Train because, you know, you want to be proficient. You want to be a warrior, a protector, a sheepdog, whatever, right? But don't get so obsessed with getting there so quickly. You know, there's a reason why we call our jiu-jitsu instructors professor, because it takes them on average at least 10 years to obtain that black belt. And that's about the time that it takes to get your PhD, um, or doctorate or whatever this there is merit to putting in the work over a long period of time and making it quality work all right number four is um don't take it easy <laughs> all right number four is really important don't take it easy on somebody until you know that you can and new guys are freaking dangerous all right let me explain that so new guys are freaking dangerous well like well, how is a new guy dangerous well New guys are dangerous because they're freaking spazzy, right? And like when you train with somebody who's been training for a year or more, they're starting to learn how to control themselves. Like when they throw a chop at the bridge of your nose, they know how to like not connect. <laughs> All right. When they're like rolling around on the ground with you and like go to sweep you, they know that it's training and that their lives don't depend on it at that moment. So they're not going to sweep you so hard that you like, land really hard and like you're like ow they know to die they know how to dial it down just enough so that they are training proficiently but not hurting their training opponents new guys guys who don't have a lot of experience with martial arts or training they always feel like and it's true inside their head their adrenaline is going so much especially during sparring that they can't dial it back they don't really understand that like in their head they may understand it rationally but in their mind Somewhere in their primitive anim animalistic mind, they don't understand that it's not like a life or death fight. They're trying so hard to defend themselves. They're so scared of actually what's happening that they're 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 gonna connect with you harder than they should. It's um they're spazzy and it's just the way that it is. And in the jujitsu community, when you get you know blue belt and higher, everyone jokes like, dude, like freaking, you gotta roll with the new belt. Everybody knows and anybody learns eventually, don't take it easy on these guys until it's very clear that you can. 
a lot of the times, too, people come in and they're new at a given martial art, but they're not new martial artists, right? And they fail to, they fail to tell you this. Is they conveniently fail to let you know that they were a D1 wrestler or um, that they've got 15 years of boxing experience and it's their first day at Wing Chun or whatever it may be, right? So these guys can be very dangerous. You never want to underestimate your opponent. That goes double on the streets. If you meet somebody and they just you you feel like they're too skinny or they're too nerdy or they're too fat, like you don't know because I've met a lot of very skinny, very nerdy, and also very fat, like high level martial artists. And uh, you wouldn't think that somebody who's grossly overweight, or not grossly, but you wouldn't think that somebody who's overweight could be a really uh, dangerous killing machine. But looks can be very deceiving, my friend. So. Never, ever, ever underestimate your opponent on the street, but also never underestimate your opponent in sparring. It's really important because that's how we get hurt. And obviously, when we get hurt, we have to stop training, and nobody wants that, all right? You want to keep going, and that's why I say slow and steady wins the race because if you stick with it and you stay healthy enough to keep training, well, then eventually you're going to get to where your goal is. You're going to get to where you want to be. If that goal is a belt, I don't have anything negative to say about that. I really don't. In fact, I think it's a good goal to have because we all need a goal. And this actually leads me into number five here is um, keep a goal, make a goal, set goals for yourself and use them as waypoints. And there's a reason why they give out belts in many different martial arts is because it's a good waypoint for you. Also because it's good to keep people coming back and keep your, you know, your students and Keep your seats filled in your school, right? Your attendance seats, so to speak. But I, you know, some guys have this thing, especially in jujitsu, where it's not about the belt; it's about how good you're getting. Yeah, but like my professor, my instructor will let me know how good I'm getting by giving me stripes and belts. So that's a good waypoint for me. There's no harm, there's no shame in wanting to get that next stripe, in wanting to get that next belt. Um, if you're like, here's here's what I'll say about that. If you're going out there and like kissing ass. And like being one of those guys, in order to get belts and stripes, well, then you're fucked up. You're not doing it right. Don't do that. That's really, um, that's not cool. But it's just not, not manly, frankly. But if you're going out there and you're actively trying to get better and using your belts or stripes or whatever it is as a waypoint, nothing wrong with that. If a black belt is your goal, that is your goal. And train hard. When you get it, set a new goal that you want, you know, a first degree, second degree, third degree black belt, whatever. But always set goals for yourself. It really does help in training. If your goal is like me, I want to get in the cage and I want to have a fight and I want to win that fight, that's your goal. That will inspire you to keep going. No matter how hard it gets, because it will get very hard. It psychologically will get hard. It physically will get very hard. When your body is too sore to even roll and you still got to go and like, Go to nogi practice or wrestling practice or whatever Muay Thai. Like you're, you're not going to want to go unless you have that goal in your mind at all times. You might not actually push yourself enough to do it. Um, number six is fairly important, actually. It's people's personal life philosophies don't matter. This is hand-to-hand -hand combat. All right, like let's be honest about this because you know, especially in the old traditional martial arts, there is a tendency for like the sensei or the sifu or whatever the instructor to like kind of be a cult of personality, so to speak. And he would like teach about like Buddhist stuff or like Chinese philosophy or whatever, right? But like, let's be honest about this if you're studying martial arts for a very traditional way of like, you know understanding Japanese or Chinese culture, like, cool, like, okay, you could study some, like, Zen stuff and whatever, right? Like, read the Tao. Like, there's, I've done that. It's cool. Like, it's cool to, like, find out more about the history and philosophy of, you know, where these martial arts originated. But it's got nothing to do with being good at hand-to-hand -hand combat. <laughs> and that's one of the things I really enjoy about jiu-jitsu is it's, one, like, kind of an unspoken rule is that the professor doesn't teach you about his philosophies on stuff. He doesn't really, like, mo like most jiu-jitsu professor professors, like, off the mat, they might, like, give you some advice here and there, like, for sure, like, any good coach will. But 
on the mat, you're there for one reason, you're learning techniques in order to best be able to um, kill your enemy. <laughs> Let's just be honest about it. Those philosophies on the mat, I'm sorry, let's, let's not bring those on. I mean, if we're talking about training for hand-to-hand -hand combat, let's talk about training for hand-to-hand -hand combat. Let's talk about the best, most efficient ways to do your job as a warrior. Your personal philosophy is not mine. It doesn't matter, all right? And any professor who tries to, like, sway you or teach you about his personal like outlook on life like i'm sorry that has no bearing on what we're doing here you can talk to me over a beer about your philosophy and maybe i'll listen maybe i'll agree maybe i'll disagree but on the mat let's focus on training all right and this is a bonus for you here um but i'm going to put it in it in, in this video is if you're on the mat you should not be discussing anything except the topic at hand, which is the techniques. You should not stop training in order to talk about how was your weekend. And this is my pet peeve because this is the way I came up in jiu-jitsu. My instructor, John Helweg, taught out of, out of you know, Whippany, New Jersey, and now Morristown, New Jersey. Um, he was a very traditional guy. Mixed martial artist, professional mixed martial artist, right? Knew jiu-jitsu very well, knows jiu-jitsu very well. Um, very traditional man, came up in Tang Soo Do, got his black belt and all that, but would not permit any talking on the mats, would not permit any cursing on the mat. I remember I would like get thrown to the mat really hard. Like one time I got thrown down, someone came on top of my ribs on a, you know, in a, like throw me down, jumped on me, case Katami, and like really fucked up my rib. I go, ah, fuck. And he goes, no cursing on the mat. And I'm like, I got, I got messed up. He's like, I don't care. No cursing on the mat. Like all the time, just very, very, very professional. And this is how we need to be if we want to become a good fighter. Very professional. If we're drilling, we're drilling. We're not stopping to drill. We're not stopping to drill. The only reason that we could stop drilling is go to the bathroom if we really were going to piss our pants or like if we were about to die, maybe take a sip of water. But you don't stop and talk about your weekend. You don't stop because you're getting tired. You're there to train. You're not there to like lay on the couch. Go lay on the couch later. If you're there, you're going to drill, you're going to train until the time for drilling is over, and you're going to put on your mouth guard, put in your mouth guard, take a sip of water, and go fight. Like That's, that's the way it should be. I, I realize in most schools nowadays, that's not the way it is, especially in jiu-jitsu, because it's like loosey-goosey, but not the way it should be. Um, but that is uh, my personally personally. Like my pet peeve about a lot of schools is you need to be drilling when you're drilling. You need to be fighting when you're fighting. You talk after class. Martial arts is a really good way to meet people and build a very solid community for yourself. 100%. And this is going to be the next thing I cover on my list. But while you're training, train. All right? You want a social club? Go join a social club. After you're done training is when you should be talking and getting to know people. My personal opinion, it might not be popular, but it's efficient and it works. And I know it works. Now, number seven is travel. Travel to train, okay? And make as many contacts and connections as you possibly can because those will come in very handy and very useful later on in your martial arts career, especially if you decide that you want to open a business and make a business out of it, or if you want to compete, or if you want to simply like know where other training opportunities are, or if you simply are interested in making friends, which we all should be because nobody can ever have enough friends. Really, this martial arts journey, for me, has introduced me to some of the finest men and women in the world, and I'm very privileged to be able to know many of you out there. When I first started the YouTube channel, um, it was more about me trying to push information out there. I met several, several people that have commented on my video and stuff. And like I've always had in the back of my mind, and somebody told me once when I first got into this, is that, oh, there's weirdos out there. Like, make sure that, you know, you, you, you stay, like, uh, you keep your personal life to yourself. But you know what? Honestly, I've ne met nobody has, like, knock on wood, I've not met really any creepers. Everybody has been a freaking stand-up individual, and that's martial artists for you. That's anybody who's willing to like put in the sweat, blood, and tears 
to become a better warrior, solid people, stand-up people, people that I'd be willing to um, go into battle with, frankly speaking, and probably trust my life with. So, yes, you should absolutely, while there's no talking and, you know, like socializing on the mats, when you're not on the mats, you should absolutely be making connections, building friendships, socializing, because, again, this is going to be very important. And I've realized one thing is, like, actually... There's a situation happening right now where my friend's fight venue in Thailand that we're supposed to do, it like kind of is falling through. So I'm reaching out to people that I know personally throughout the martial arts community, and I've had a lot of great support. Oh, yeah, I know this guy. He works over here, and he could probably get him a fight, this and that. Like, dude, this is halfway across the world in freaking Thailand, man. And, like, I've got guys that I've sat down and interviewed or guys that I've trained with and thing. I know so-and-so. Let me call him and help you out and help your friend out. Like, this is how networking connections work. I know people that I can sit down with today. I'm actually in the process right now. Um, I've got a friend. He's Israeli, and we're looking at building connections in the Jewish community to teach self-defense. Um, High-level Muay Thai guy, right? So, you know, if, if you utilize these connections properly, not only can you build, build very solid friendships, but you can make business connections, you can make personal connections, you can make, you know, I'm in, <laughs> I'm in the UK, I just got in trouble for like, you know, defending myself in a bar fight, now I'm in legal trouble, but I, I know so-and-so, he works for the Metropolitan Police, like, hey, can you help me? All right, mate, like, settle down, I'll be right there. Like, that type of thing is really, really important. Um, and it doesn't have to be any of those scenarios, but you know what I mean when I say make connections, build friendships in this community, because again, life is about friendships, it's about connections, it's about coming together as people in a community, it's something that we love, and just enjoying each other's company. Now, with that being said, I appreciate you watching this video. If you watch it all the way through, you are obviously one of these guys or girls who, this is your lifestyle. You're a warrior, died in the wool killer. And you just enjoy the hell out of doing this stuff, learning about it, you know, and I'm sure you're nodding your head and agreeing to at least a few of the points that I've laid out for you today. I am really excited for what's to come, and I'm so excited to meet more of you guys and keep talking with you guys about martial arts, about all of this stuff. So thanks for being a part of the community, guys. Until next time. Please remember that you are your first and last line of defense. Guys, I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers, mother flowers.